Oh, look at that motherly love. Doesn't it bring a little tear to your eye? Warning, this video contains graphic images of deadly spiders. If you suffer arachnophobia, this video is going to scare you. And there's also an epic bug battle in this week's video. Well, hello, this is week nine of my deadly redback spider enclosure. I've got a very bright light on the side there because I've worked out that that is a way to control spiderlings and make them uh, stay in one spot. They seem to go for the light. It's been another epic week in there. Um, one major problem I've been having is humidity. It's been getting very wet. Any moisture that's in there uh, was starting to fog up uh, the glass here. And I'm having a lot of trouble with mould inside here as well. Uh, I think a lot of people were saying that the mould can be a major contaminant. Mind you, I don't, know, I don't fully understand the effects, the bad effects that it can have. Uh, the other thing that happened during the week was I finally got footage of an egg sac being made almost from the point where the eggs are coming out of the backside of the red back. It was that girl there, and it was a grand moment to finally get that because it's, oh, I've missed it so many times, and that will be a separate video up onto YouTube. To try and combat the humidity problems I had in the tank, I ended up taking away the muslin cloth that I have across the top. Um, there's no evidence of spiderlings ever getting up into the gaffer tape stickiness underneath here. And what I did across the top of the tank, just in case spiderlings could get through the mesh, I put a roll of gaffer tape, so it's like the sort of stuff that you would catch flies, even that sticky paper that supposedly catches insects, it's sort of just like that. Uh, I can't see any redback spiderlings in this, but what I have caught is that critter there, whatever it is, maybe you can tell me. Sadly, I don't think I'll be able to save that, but I will take the sticky stuff off because I need to mark up the ninth week and I'll also get rid of this very bright light. So yeah, week nine of the Redback Madness. And there was definitely an egg sack laid up during week nine. I'll come and open up the enclosure and see who pops out. Oh yeah. Now I'm just looking down through the side of the tank and what the spiderlings are set up is like a mezzanine level of web. I'm just pointing it out to you there. And I'm going to have to work very quickly here because the spiders are now alarmed for the fact that they can see light up the top and they're trying to escape. Uh, and this is the problem when I take that light away from the side, all of a sudden these guys get attitude and look at them going for the top right here, they're trying to get out. I'd like to show you inside the tank here, I don't have much time, I think that's the next sack which has possibly opened up there, or it's something gone awry with that one, I'm not quite sure. There is another spider there with its egg sack there, that got introduced a couple of weeks back, now something, the red backs don't touch that spider, so maybe the spider experts can explain that. Uh, that's not one of the alpha females, but I think some of these egg sacs here have hatched, okay? These were some of the first that were developed in the tank, of course, uh, many of them have hatched, as, as you can see with the spiderlings. There is one of the smaller females there, um, there's one of the alpha females, as I call it, and the very, very dark egg sac right there is probably about to hatch. There's a large concentration of spiderlings here, because that's where I had the light. Uh, I, it was a nice trick to work out the light can control these guys, and when the light's taken away, as you can see, they start to get a mind of the, all of their own. I'm just spinning around to the back side here. Uh, there's one of the larger females there. We give her a bit of a tea, she might do a bit of a squirt at me. There you go. She's lovely. And that's her egg sacs there. Now it was one of the ones there that I watched getting made during the week. It was just amazing. It takes half an hour. Got spidlings all over that thing now. That's how, they, how they're going to get out. Uh, Thomas is looking very weary down there. I've got to put some water in here and I've got to come along and put in some fresh carrot. Spidlings are out of control, I need to put this back on for a sec. Sorry if this is a bit rushed and looking a bit uh, ragtag, but I've just installed a, a doubled up loop of uh, gaffer tape all the way around here. Hopefully, I can take this back off and control those spidlings. Okay, I'll come in and put some fresh water in. Yeah. And I'll come in and put some carrot in. Last week, you didn't see me put the carrot in, it actually got put in uh, midweek. So that carrot's only like half a week old. Mind you, it's starting to all get squishy and squashy. Yeah, some people really like seeing the carrot going, I don't know why. If you can recall, there are actually four spiders killed in here last week. The uh, house spider got killed over here, but there were two stick spiders, I believe, and something else, a golden orb or something. Uh, they were killed here, but I'm pretty sure I can't see the carcasses anywhere. And I can barely see those lizards these days, uh, they're nearly all gone. That's a shot of the other spider and spider egg as a close-up, in case I need it. Ah uh, yes, the spiderlings are planning another daring escape, I dare say. And you're probably asking the question, Leo, what does a tank smell like? There's a lot of rotting things down there. It looks like a lot of things that are wet and things that have gone off. Well, I can tell you what, 
the spider tank actually doesn't smell too bad. I've smelled far worse things in my life. Uh, one would be a wet dog, uh, but the smell down there isn't as bad as it looks. So much for my tape method of trying to control these guys, because look at that there. Look at that there. There is a spiderling. Okay, on the tape there, walking straight across it. These guys are completely unstoppable. Well, I'm going to attempt something really, really stupid here. I'm going to help these spiderlings uh, get free. I'm probably going to get attacked by mother here. And I think they're very close to being born. And I'm going to help these guys out. Okay, because I want to let them be free. Come on, babies. Come to papa. Yeah. Okay, let's see who pops out of that one. Well, here they come. I'm not sure how far off they were from hatching. I think it was very, very close. Mother's just decided that she's probably totally shocked that the, the big, ugly humans come along and done that. But I was actually a bit curious to see them come out because it is extremely difficult to get footage of these sacks opening naturally. In fact, I think it's almost impossible. And from what I can work out is that they'll basically become feed for the other spiderlings in this tank. There's a lot of uh, cannibalistic spider activity going on every week now. I wonder if Mother Spider gives each one of them a name. Boy, you want to have a good book of names, wouldn't you? Because there's hundreds in there. One thing that's amazed me every time I've seen the spiderlings is just how much ability they've got as, as, as youngsters. I mean, they seem to have attitude, they can make web, they can go wherever they want. Um, they want to dominate the world as soon as they enter the world. There are some videos of these x opening up Black Widow ones, and they basically come out one at a time. It's actually a fairly uneventful event. Um, and I think that's, I've witnessed that before. You sort of see a spider appear and it runs off, another one appears and runs off, and it's a bit like whenever they want to come out, they come out. I've just basically made them come out a little bit faster than normal. It's that time of year, we get these sorts of beetles around our house, Christmas beetles as I call them, you can get them beautifully metallic like this one. Uh, they've got extremely powerful claws and all, they can fly, they love to burrow into the ground. Uh, you put them in your hand and it feels like, sometimes it feels like they're biting it, but it's just the very powerful claws that they've got. I put one of these guys into the redback tank a couple of weeks back and it took a good hour, if not more, for the redbacks to control one of these and it was a massive meal for them, it fed the redbacks for a long time. I'm going to put another one in because I know the redbacks love to have a feed on one of these. Yeah, got to make sure my redbacks have got a good meal. And I'm sure that Christmas beetle is going to be perfect for it. Oh, and Mrs. Redback isn't very happy about that beetle being in there. Looks like Christmas beetle is going to have a ride on Thomas there. And it's getting caught up in some of the redback web, which tends to be the main thing the redbacks use to capture stuff. The beetle's crawling across this side. No matter where you go in here, there's danger. Watch out. And that red back there is aware something is below it. It was a major uh, thing when I put the other beetle in there that all the red backs got highly aroused by it. They probably see it as a great meal. Okay, it's happening, it's happening, and it doesn't take very long. Mind you, I think that red back is going to fight with that beetle for a long time. Mind you, the beetle might be able to get away. No, look at that. It's got the web trapped around its back leg. How often have we seen that? Oh, is it going to crawl away? They have got incredibly powerful legs on them. That's the one thing those guys have got. Can it get away? It'd be one of those things, you know, pray for the Christmas beetle. Oh, God, I started to think of pray for Gonzo. Let's not do that again, hey? Oh, it's just falling back there. What's going to happen? Oh, oh, the redback is coming across. The redback is coming across, but the beetle is crawling up onto the dozer here. Normally the crickets are there, but I think all the crickets have been eaten this week. Oh, man, but there's web everywhere. There's that other sp strange spider there, which the redbacks won't touch. I wonder why, but it's... That, I think that beetle's in trouble. How many times have we seen that in this tank? Yeah, that red back is agitated. It looks like it's calling for help. Mind you, the spilings won't be much help. Oh, the beetle is crawling across the cat bulldozer here. It's, oh, it's on a tumble. And the other red back is just in the corner of frame there. It's come across. See, the word's out. The word's out. There's the other female there come across. The word is out. This thing is in the tank and it's going to get taken out. Yeah, when they're in kill mode, they start to move very fast and very rapidly, the females. Oh, yeah, I don't think I've seen the male yet. Are there some the males hiding around somewhere? The beetle, the more it moves around, the more agitated the redbacks become. Ooh, it's just gone through that tank of water there, and it's going back into the danger zone. Oh, I better save it from there. I don't want it to drown. Oh, it just got out by itself. It was quite a nice save. And back up onto the safety of Thomas the Tank. Mind you, that didn't save Gonzo. Ooh, there's that female over there again. You know, that's the thing of these redbacks. You know, once they they got their, you know, knickers in a knot, they can be really troublesome girls. 
Beetle's just caught up in that water tank again. And the danger part there is you've got the female redback just above. Oh man, that is a very dangerous place to be. Extremely dangerous. And it's just crawling up on the back of Thomas there again. It's funny, often the insects will use Thomas as like a refuge and like a safe zone. I've seen that a few times, haven't we? Hey, Thomas to the rescue of these critters. Oh, no, no, look at that. There's the female there protecting her ground, and she might be coming over for the attack. Ooh, that beetle goes back the other way. It's history, I'm sure of it. No, it's going back onto the dozer. And over in the other corner, a whole bunch of spoilings have worked out how to escape. Get down, get down. The beetle, the beetle has just crawled over to the other corner, and that is the very aggressive female there. And will the beetle get away? That's where it got caught up last time. Can it get away this time, or is that red back going to get enough web onto it to... In ensnare it. Oh, I don't think it looks good for the beetle, mind you. They have got very, very strong legs. That is their great ability. And it's just crawling away again onto the safety of the Millennium Falcon. And while I'm battling spidlings that are escaping, the uh, Christmas beetle is back over onto the Thomas, and that is another bad zone. There's a smaller spider there behind it. Oh, what's going to go on there? The female is just above. It's gone back for another swim. And again, that's a very dangerous place to be because you can get so easily caught up in there. The beetles sort of got out of the water trap there, but it's in that very dangerous spot of that female just above her. Oh dear, oh dear. I wouldn't want to stay there for too long. Oh, it's back in the water, back into the water. Come on, beetle, get out of there. And again, the beetle's back onto Thomas there. And it's going to be right near that red back. The red back is not going to be happy. And the red back's going to do its red backy things, okay? So it deals out the web. I really haven't seen much of... Oh, it's just fallen. There's a very dangerous spot there. Oh, this looks very bad. Oh, yeah, this looks very bad indeed. And the red back really all it has to do is get a bite in. And then it's all over Red Rover. Yeah, not looking very good at all, is it? Hey, I think... Oh, I thought before that this beetle was gone, but I think this time it's history. Um, once you get into a predicament with these redback spiders to a certain point, uh, you're a goner. Oh, I wouldn't want to be in the beetle's position at the moment because the redback will just be dealing out the web, as much web as it can possibly give it, to contain those legs. Uh, the legs are the weapon in a sense, because the legs will always let the beetle try to get away. Um, but it's going to be one of those things that will just thrash on for like an hour as a redback contains that beetle and the best thing about the beetle is it, it's a huge meal okay they'll go on feeding this tank uh, for days and days and days if not weeks and we're just watching the way the redback deals with that beetle there in real time the last time i saw this it was all captured in time lapse so it really distorted the actual uh, adventure that goes on when the spider is capturing the beetle yeah okay, there's more web at the back there Quite amazing, isn't it? You know, a very powerful beetle, redback spider, just amazingly beautiful the way it deals out, deals out its web and the way it comes in for the kill. Oh, I'm just shooting through uh, glass, it's a little bit dirty here. Hopefully, I've got the focus right and we can see that beetle struggling there. The female redback is just above there doing her webby thing. The back legs are dealing out the web. I just love seeing that. Something about that that I just, you know, enjoy seeing. And I think what we've, well, what I worked out from last time when I captured this was it takes a lot of web uh, around those legs to contain that very, very powerful beetle. That's a good kill zone too because Thomas is featuring beautifully in this one. Redback doing some more web there. You know, that beetle will continue on fighting. Uh, the redback's got to get a bite in to really quell the strength of that beetle. And uh, it, I know last time it went on for a long, long time before the beetle finally came to rest. I'm just trying to get the time when the spider comes in for that bite. Okay, we're getting webbed there. I'm nice and close there. Uh, it's the, the bite onto the legs. You probably, it may do multiple bites as well because it's quite a big critter to contain. But, uh, it's the web which is the important thing because uh, it's dealing with such power in that beetle. I know there'll be some people saying, oh, this is so sad and all the rest of it, but hey, this is the way nature plays out. Uh, this is going on all the time, okay, all the time in your backyard. Well, maybe my backyard more than yours, but um, this is normal, okay? This is the way things live. They live because they kill. And there's the red back doing more of that beautiful web around that beetle there. 
very powerful. I don't, you know, anyone who's had one of those biddles in their hands know how strong the legs on, on them are. And for the fact that the web can come in and contain those legs is just quite miraculous. Ooh, that might be the bite moment there. Ooh, I hope that was the bite moment, yeah. Um, they do come in, and I'll try and get a bite on the leg. It's, uh, I mean, they've got such small fangs, it's usually a very hard event to capture. And while that epic beetle and spider battle has been going on there, I have been slapping down the bench here with spiderlings escaping all the time. Um, yeah, that's the problem. Uh, they are there. Okay, that's the problem. Uh, they can get out really easily. Oh, damn, that thing got away. It's down there somewhere. The more you look here, the more you see. The damn things are getting out everywhere. One up the back there too. Gone. And the battle royale continues on down there. It's funny, I would say that that beetle looks like it's got some of the web off its legs. They will just fight on and on and on, but the red back doesn't give up. What I've got to do here uh, is I've got to get this lid back on here because there are just too many spiderlings getting out. And I want to show you another spider that I captured during the week, which is the most interesting of all. Okay, I have my spider battle bowl there, and I also have the spider that many people tell me is the main predator of the Australian Redback Spider. Let me get this spider into the battle bowl so we can have a better look at it. It's a very common spider around our place, and that can be very, very sprightly. Okay, down on the bowl there is hopefully a, what I call, daddy long leg spider. Uh, very common spider you see in homes. They stay up near the ceiling, and people tell me they are good at cleaning up all sorts of insects and other spiders. Now, to be honest here, I can't see how a spider which is so small and so spindly in legs uh, control and kill a redback spider. I need to put a redback spider in here to see it happen for myself. Now, if I do put one in here, who do you think is going to win the battle? Do you think the daddy long leg spider there can kill a redback spider? Or do you think the redback spider is going to win? I think I need to do it as a separate battle because it would be totally unfair to add the daddy long legs into the spider tank here which is so overrun with deadly redback spiders. Yes, it would be a very, very tricky battle to uh, try and work out who's going to win because I know the redbacks are very fierce. There's actually something quite epic that's just happened inside the spider tank here. Let me get the lid back off. Well, surprise, surprise, if you were praying for the Christmas beetle, guess what? It has actually escaped. I told you their claws are amazing, but if that redback has got a bite into it, it is going to be history. There it is there, crawling on the cat truck again, and... Like, you know, if a bite is into that thing, it's just going to get slower and slower and slower, and then the other spiders will pick it off. Uh, I don't think it's as sprightly as it was before, and climbing on Thomas isn't going to help you. In nature, you often hear people say it's survival of the fittest, and if you've got any sort of impairment, you are going to be taken out. In fact, I can see redback spiderlings crawling on that. Oh, my goodness me, it's headed back towards the zone where that other redback had got it. Now, I'll be honest... I think it is slowing down because it's had a bite. It's just a matter of time, I think. I thought for a while there it was saved. And look up here, the spidlings are all manically trying to get to the top here. That's the Vaseline line. We're looking inside the tank there. They get straight past the Vaseline line, but I noticed that they work as a, a group. They'll lay web down, they go straight to the top. But unfortunately, my thumb will come along and clean them up. Well, almost like history repeating itself, that silly beetle, and it's not very intelligent, has crawled back into the wrong zone. Mind you, it's probably totally dazed and confused by a redback bite. And again, it is in the same spot that it was in all that peril before. So like I keep saying, it is just a matter of time before it becomes the big meal for the week. I've just spotted the male. It is acting very frantically there. That's the male redback. Finally saw it this week. Very hard to see. It's a very small spider. Oh, these things are escaping everywhere. Yeah, curious mystery, uh, the female red back there, and there's the other white spider that was introduced a couple of weeks back. Mind you, there's a bit of a, a kerfuffle there. Hmm, why has it been allowed to live and lay an egg sack there? Well, most things that enter the tank here, well, get nailed really fast. 
Maybe we should do a hashtag pray for Beetle. Mind you, it never saved Gonzo, but then again, miracles can happen. Hashtag pray for Beetle and it might be here by week 10. Stranger things have happened in this tank. Oh, the Beetle's in trouble just down there. <laughs> you better start praying. Uh, I hope this gives you a great update into what's going on in the spider tank. Uh, lots of things go on in here. Uh, of course, uh, lots of life, lots of death. But hey, that's the way nature plays out. I've got to get the lid back on here because the spiderlings are just getting out so easily. And this does stop the bulk of them from getting out. If I get the light back on there, it might quell some of the spiderlings from wanting to crawl up to the top. And if you're a gambling person, uh, putting money on the beetle, well, I don't think you're going to win. But that was week nine, a nice little bug battle in this week. And doing the terrarium is only happening because of the YouTuber Beanmeister22, who I've known for a long time on YouTube, said, Leo, put those redback spiders in your backyard to work. And by doing so, we are learning lots about this very mysterious and secretive spider along the way. And I think by now we can all agree, it's a totally awesome killing machine. Now, the question is, in the separate video between the Daddy Longlegs and the Redback Spider, who is going to win? Can you pick a winner between those two spiders?